boogie right. man ban coming round the band is boogie man ban is boogie man ban tribute Greetings, my fellow Fright Fiends, and thanks so much for dropping by the Horror Zone channel. I hope everyone's doing well. This is going to be uh, part four in my quiet little tribute of Salem's Lot uh, series. I want to continue to thank everyone for supporting uh, this new series. Um, I haven't done one in a couple weeks. The last one I did um, was on uh, Clarissa K. Mason, of course, who played Marjorie Glick in the film. It's, it's enjoyment for me um, finding out more about these actors that I look up to so much from this film and finding out more about their works that I didn't know about, um, just their personal lives as well. And, uh, you know, many of the people from Salem's Lot, um, you know, it came out 43 years ago, just this past Thursday. It was the 43rd anniversary. And a lot of these amazing actors and actresses are gone. Um, they passed on years ago. And uh, the actor I want to talk about today um, probably plays one of my favorite people in the film. And for some reason, there's just something about his acting style that I was always drawn to. And of course, I'm talking about Ed Flanders. And of course, Ed Flanders played... Bill! That is Dr. Bill Norton in Salem's Lot. Uh, he has always been one of my favorite characters in the film. I don't know what it was, the camaraderie he had with uh, David Soule. Um, just, um, he just, uh, he had a very, you know, paternal, there was a very paternal feel to him. And I watched this movie as a very young kid. And I think maybe that's what I gravitated towards. There was just something very fatherly about him, but also welcoming. He wasn't a dick. Um, I just love the way he delivers his dialogue. It's very just, um, conversational. And, uh, I think people don't understand these days what a gift being a good actor is. And when I watch a lot of these films now, going back, I mean, of course, I've seen Salem's Lot thousands of times, but uh, just, you know, studying, you know, the acting style from the 70s and just how different it is by today's standards, you can just tell that it's it's less winking and nodding at the camera. It's just it's it's a craft. And Ed Flanders just had an amazing he, he had that gift. He had that gift and he could pull you into his performances. And I felt the same way when I watched him in other films. Um, other films like uh, Exorcist 3, uh, where he played Father Dyer. Um, his delivery and his dialogue with uh, uh, George C. Scott, uh, the scenes together that they have are just, again, so fluid and so amazingly perfect. They're just, I can't describe them as anything other than perfect. They just have this flow to them. And you can believe that these two uh, men are friends. And I just thought it was brilliant. And... Um, you know, that that's probably the second film I saw Ed Flanders in because I didn't watch St. Elsewhere. I remember seeing St. Elsewhere, like pictures of what St. Elsewhere was, maybe in the TV Guide or something like that, if people remember TV Guide. And I remember seeing a picture of him and going, oh, that's Bill Norton. But I wasn't really into those shows. I was really young when St. Elsewhere came, uh, when St. Elsewhere premiered. So it wasn't a show I would have watched regularly. Exorcist 3 is like the big thing that I remember seeing him in again. And that was when I was 16 when that movie came out. And then, you know, finding out that he had passed away, um, I found out shortly before um, his last film would come out, and that was Bye Bye Love. Now, Bye Bye Love was a kind of a romantic comedy um, dealing with uh, men going through divorce and sort of getting back into the dating scene and what that effect has on their children. And I related to that. There wasn't a lot of films like that. You know, Mrs. Doubtfire had come out a few years earlier, but... My parents divorced when I was very young, so it was kind of an interesting film to watch um, and just see, you know, kind of some of the things that they discussed in that were things that I went through because my dad remarried a couple times before I was 10 years old, so I went through it and uh, I really, you know, wanted to watch that film. And Ed Flanders plays this retiree and he's working at McDonald's and uh, the main characters in it are Matthew Modine. Um, Randy Quaid and Paul Reiser, but I really just loved seeing um, Ed Flanders in that film. And, but knowing that he had passed away, you know, you know, before I got a chance to watch it, really brought me down and made me sad. I don't know why it just it really bo it, it's always and it's always bothered me. Um, I know I didn't know the man, but he really, you know, he he made an impact on me at a very early age. And uh, knowing that he went through that, he went through whatever he was going through personally, um, which I'll talk about more in the segment that sort of gives a breakdown of his life. Um, it just, it, it still hits me hard when I, when I do my research on it. I know he had uh, drinking problems and things like that, but what a craftsman. And uh, I don't think enough people talk about how brilliant 
um, he was as an actor. So I'm just going to let this play and then I'll come back for my closing thoughts. Here we go. Edward Paul Flanders was born December 29th, 1934. The son of Bernice Brown and Francis Michael Gray Flanders. His mother was killed in an automobile accident when he was 14. After graduating from Patrick Henry High School where he played hockey in 1952, he enlisted in the United States Army where he served as an x-ray technician. After his service with the United States Army ended, Flanders began his acting career on Broadway before moving to guest parts in television series. From 1967 through 1975, Flanders appeared in more than a dozen American TV shows, including six appearances on Hawaii Five-0 as five different characters. During this time, he was also prolific in TV movies. He in the late 1970s, Flanders moved away from small TV roles to take major credits in both TV and feature films while continuing his stage career. In 1974, Flanders won a Tony Award for Best Supporting or Featured Actor for A Moon for the Misbegotten by Eugene O'Neill on Broadway. He also won an Emmy Award in 1976 for the TV movie adaption of A Moon for the Misbegotten. In 1982, he began his role in St. Elsewhere that earned him five Emmy Award nominations as Outstanding Lead Actor in a TV Series, winning the award in 1983. After a stormy departure from the series in 1987, he returned for two more episodes in 1988, including the series finale. Although he later returned for guest appearances, his exit on St. Elsewhere as a regular cast member was titled Moon for the Misbegotten after the play that won him a Tony Award. The episode gained much publicity as Westfall left the hospital after mooning his new boss, Dr. John Gideon, played by Ronnie Cox. Flanders continued his working relationship with executive producer Bruce Paltrow in the short-lived 1994 CBS series The Road Home. In, his, in addition to his six-year role as Dr. Donald Westfall, Flanders is noted as an actor who has played President Harry Truman more times. In feature films, Flanders performed major roles in dark movies based on novels by William Peter Blatty. In the first, The Ninth Configuration, he plays a self-effacing medic at a U.S. Army uh, psychiatric facility. The film was based on Blatty's 1978 novel of the same name. Itself a reworking of his earlier darkly satirical novel Twinkle Twinkle Killer Kane from 1966. In 1990, Flanders played Father Dyer alongside star George C. Scott and Blatty's The Exorcist III based on the novel Legion. One of Flanders' best remembered TV guest roles was in the first season of MASH episode Yankee Doodle Doctor playing film director Lieutenant Dwayne William Bricker. Uh, who is making a documentary about MASH units and who visits the 477th after Hawkeye and Trapper sabotage his effort, Brickner abandons the project and leaves. Flanders also played nationally known journalist William Allen White in the 1977 made-for-TV movie Mary White. This movie was based on the famous eulogy White wrote about his daughter after her death in 1922 due to a blow to the head while riding her horse. He also appeared in the 1979 made-for-TV horror miniseries Salem's Lot as Dr. Bill Norton. He also played news anchor John Woodley in the 1983 made-for-TV suspense drama special Bulletin about a group of environmentalists who threatened to detonate a nuclear weapon in Charleston, South Carolina. After three divorces, chronic pain from a back injury sustained in an automobile accident in 1989 and a lifelong battle with depression, Flanders died from a self-inflicted gunshot wound on February 22, 1995 in Denny, California at the age of 60. No suicide note was found and his remains were cremated. So I hope everyone enjoyed uh, that little tribute to the late great Ed Flanders. Um, just, uh, yeah, a brilliant, brilliant man, a brilliant actor somebody that really means a lot to me um he's been gone nearly 30 years which is crazy um but uh yeah i i really that it was really important for me to do this one early in this series because i don't think enough people talk about how great he was and i feel the same way about reggie i feel the same way about barney and even clarissa to some uh extent um some of these actors are going to be forgotten and I think it's important for people that respect the craft that went into making a film that has touched you or made you excited about filmmaking or storytelling. It's important to remember those people and remember, um, it's important to remember, you know, you know, what went into creating something that means so much to you. And uh, I don't know why I'm getting emotional. I'm weird. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's it, this was a hard one to do for some reason. I really had a hard time, um, you know, just 
researching him and and really had a I really felt bad you know uh what he went through in his later years he's greatly missed and i enjoy watching a lot of his performances like i said next to salem's lot which is my favorite performance of his obviously but um his performance as father dyer in the exorcist 3 if you haven't seen exorcist 3 I like that film more than I like the original Exorcist. I think that film is brilliant. I'm glad that it's getting the notoriety it finally deserves. It came out a little over 32 years ago. I remember going to the movie theater and seeing it and it terrifying me. And it's always been a film that I never understood why I got the backlash from some film critics. Um, but uh, yeah, it is the true sequel to The Exorcist. If you haven't seen it, definitely recommend checking it out, seeing another brilliant performance by the late great Ed Flanders. Yeah, also check out The Ninth Configuration. It is on Shutter right now, and I watched it. Uh, amazing cast and uh, another brilliant performance by the late great Mr. Flanders. So thank you so much, everyone, for watching this. I am going to be planning three more of these for December. Might be the really the only videos I do in December. I'm really going to be very busy with work and I have a lot going on right now and I really want to focus on my book, My Life in the Lot. Um, these segments are actually really helping because I do want to do um, little tributes to each of the actors um, in the book. So these are kind of contributing to my storytelling. Um, but uh, it's going to be a very crazy month in December and then we're going to be, Christmas is going to be here in, in a month. It's crazy. So but there will be some stuff coming out of the horror zone, I promise. Um, again, thank you all. Thank you so much for supporting me. Thank you so much for supporting this channel. And I'll talk to you again real soon. Take it easy. Stay scared as always. And remember, you can do nothing against the master. Hey fellow Fright Fiends, just want to say thank you again for supporting Boogeyman Ben's Horror Zone. If you're brand new to the channel and you haven't yet subscribed, please hit the subscribe button down below. Hit the bell notification so you're updated every time I drop a new video. I typically do this once or twice a week with new content. Uh, I've been doing this for over 11 years and the horror genre is a passion of mine. And it really means a lot to me that I can share that passion with all of you guys. Thanks so much again for the support and I'll talk to you again later. Take it easy, stay scared as always.